Welcome listeners and viewers to another edition of CHP Talks. We are here today with Laura Lynn, Tyler Thompson, and we're going to be talking about the BC election, about loaded questions, and about white privilege. So stay tuned. Yes, but do you right. want to introduce again our guest for today? Sure, and uh, this is a repeat uh, guest, and, and Laura Lynn, we're so happy to have you back on. And, and uh, Laura Lynn, for those who may not know, I think almost everyone does know, she is a former host of the 700 Club. Uh, she has a, a current broadcast that she does online almost every day, especially when she's not campaigning, and that's called Laura Lynn and Friends. You can find it, some great interviews there. And on September 12th, she became the provincial leader of CHPBC, the Christian Heritage Party of British Columbia. Uh, and uh, I am serving with her as her deputy leader. And we, eight days later, we were thrust into a provincial election. So uh, it's nothing like a baptism by fire. And so we are both running as candidates, uh, Lauren in, in Abbotsford South and me up in uh, the Stikeen up north. And uh, busy times, but we thought we would get together quickly and uh, talk about the campaign a little bit. So, uh, Laura Lynn, thanks for joining us again in the midst of this busy time. It's a real honor. Um, I'm having a blast. We've got uh, a whole bunch of volunteers out door knocking, uh, making sure all the signs are still up because there's a lot of wind here in Abbotsford. So uh, there was a little bit of drama because the other team well, the other parties uh, accused us of knocking over their signs. And of course, I told them we would never do that. And so uh, the wind had knocked over all their other signs. So we set ours up and for a while. It was the only one that was up. And, uh, and then uh, somebody put the other, another team, you know, another party signs right over my face uh, on on the sides to get us back so but then they they were contacted they said oh no no sorry we'll we'll take that care of that so a little bit of fun and drama and it's all par for the course very excited by um the um the response that we're getting here a lot of people asking who can i vote for in abbotsford east or mission and of course ariel's there so you know letting letting people know what they can do yeah right yeah, Great. very good. Yeah, I've I've had to replace one of my signs, uh, a face sign, you know, uh, three times. I've, well, four times now, and it was a damage again last night. I went out and took pictures of it because they're uh, trashing it. Some some poor soul is tormented by seeing my face and our message uh, there and doesn't. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, it it is illegal to wreck campaign signs, and we think people should. Uh, we believe in the rule of law. We think yeah. people should obey the law and uh, honor the uh, process of an election. So anyway, we'll keep setting our signs up and uh, carrying on with our message. So many people are right. receiving our message very positively. So it's, uh, you know, we keep we keep speaking the truth and not everyone receives it. But for those who do, it's uh, a breath of fresh air. A lot of people like our message, uh, the Sikh community in particular, I'm door knocking. And, uh, you know, we advertised in, uh, you know, one of the, um, you know, the Sikh paper here. And so I've got our message completely uh, transcribed into, you know, their Punjabi language and they are loving it. And yeah. they, they are so grateful, you know, that someone's standing up for the kids and who else is going to do it? Certainly not the NDP or the uh, liberals, you know. Yeah. Well, life, family, and freedom, I mean, that should be a pretty uh, pretty uh, good combination for almost anybody. Yes. Well, in the BC election, at this uh, time, uh, in, the, in the course of the campaign, of course, there's leaders debates. And uh, so they had a leaders debate, and I was looking at the article in the Vancouver Sun. Um, for some reason, they seem to have forgotten the CHP's leader, unfortunately. Uh, no sense of fair play there. No surprise, though, either. Um, I wasn't invited to the ball, Peter. No. Yeah, but that's okay. Cinderella comes in first later, you know. We that's still right. win in the Great end. <laughs> exactly. So um, we, but there was one of the, one of the points of controversy and debate 
coming out of that was not only who did better, who did worse, or who gained or who lost, but one of the questions that was asked. And uh, that is a very, it's an interesting question. And we're going to discuss sort of the, the question a little bit and um, maybe take a run at, uh, at answering it. But the debate moderator had asked, um, this has been a tough time, um, sorry, a time of uh, tough conversations about the inclusion and treatment of those who are black and indigenous people of color. How have you personally reckoned with your own privilege and unconscious bias as a white political leader? So the other three, le the three leaders that were in that debate who I guess are white and, um, and so they were asked that question, um, is it a fair question? And how, do you want to take a shot at answering it, Loyalyn? Well, what I would say, I guess, is that I put that question up onto my Facebook page and boy, I have got like, you know, a couple, almost 300 responses to that. And uh, one of the things that one of the people said there, which I thought was an excellent comment in response to how have you personally reckoned with your own privilege as white political leaders, uh, this guy, his name's Eric, he says, as a non-white person, I agree that this question is racist and anti-white. It should be challenged nonstop, now and after the election. Do not substitute anti-white racism for anti-colored racism. And a whole bunch of comments. Indoctrination, they said. Um, let me see what else. You know, if there is white privilege, uh, boy, I sure would like to have a bit more of it because, you know, man, I've had to work hard. I've been fired. I've been called names. I have been harangued. I've been put down in the public media. Nobody gave me any privilege because I was white. And, um, you know, one person, Miles, he says, what kind of garbage is this? What kind of stupid question? Drea Humphrey, now you might know her. She is the uh, black woman who reports for rebel media she weighed in on this she says lol it would have been awesome to see you answer that laura lynn i haven't gotten to that question yet and uh she so she's you know reporting on all of that um yeah these people are attacking all that was good and turning it upside down and they really are so i I, I just want to stand for what's right. I think character matters. I don't think race matters. I was born in Uganda, East Africa. If the truth be known, I actually feel that I'm African on the inside. And so I, I love black people. I love people of color. And so I am not a racist. You will not be able to find one racist thing I have ever, ever said. What I stand for is integrity and character. So I don't know what you think, Rod, as a white privileged well, male. You know, I, I was going to say anyone born in Canada has a privilege, you know, over people born in some other countries. Uh, anyone who has a mother and a father and is raised in a loving home, whatever race or background they have, it, you know, is privileged in a sense. I mean, it's it's uh, a privilege. It gives gives a person a, a better start in life, uh, you know, to have a mother and a father and a loving home. It's a privilege to be in a good school, not, you know, there's a lot of kids in schools in uh, this province that are getting kind of abused, I suppose, by, uh, you know, for instance, the uh, gender ideology being forced on them instead of, you know, having teachers that are instructing them in reading, writing and arithmetic. So it's a privilege to be in a good school. Um, you know, we have to accept that all of us are born into different situations uh, and, you know, of course, race, whiteness is nothing that we chose, nothing that we could do anything about. And so uh, whatever, whatever your race, uh, we, every one of us has to strive to be the best we can be under the circumstances. And certainly we speak out against uh, racism, against uh, bigotry, intolerance, uh, that type of thing. But, uh, you know, we can't be always groveling and apologizing for the fact that we've had a blessing of uh, being born in a great country where we have freedom of speech, at least up until now, <laughs> opportunity to grow a business and opportunity to uh, live as, as we believe we should live. Peter, so, I, I think yeah. if, if I could just uh, just uh, c comment one more thing, and that is that I believe that this whole movement is highlighting racial um, tension. 
It's making people think about race. It's making people who are maybe of color that they believe that somehow this is actually happening. And it's, it's making everything worse. And all of that nonsense going on in the United States of America with, you know, the uh, Black Lives Matter, uh, you know, and Antifa burning down, mm. you know, uh, the, uh, the places and businesses and all of that. Like, it's, it's just making a mess of everything. And right. there does not need to be this, but they're highlighting it. And what's coming out from this is hatred. And it's so awful. And I have never been called uh, racist names until this last two months since yeah. A whole lot of crazy stuff's been going on in the greater, you know, BC area of Vancouver. And I came in contact with some Black Lives Matter representatives. And the way they spoke to me, I saw pure hatred and, you know, was called basically, you know, a white supremacist. And I'm not. And so now they're looking at every white person and saying this. We're building hatred and nastiness into our nation through this. And instead, we should be defining people by their integrity and by their character and who they are and what they stand for. And um, it's really, you know, quite a distraction from uh, from what we should really be paying attention to. Well, as, uh, you know, high and mighty politicians like Mr. Trudeau, uh, you know, are bending over backwards to to not uh, be, you know, accused of being uh, uh you know, of having white privilege or whatever, he starts something for black entrepreneurs. Well, isn't that kind of racist? You start a program, a government program that is only accessible to a particular race. I mean, we believe that every uh, job, every opportunity, every housing situation, uh, should you know, race should have nothing to do with it. People should be able to apply and, and get the job that they're qualified to do uh, and rent a, rent a building, rent a home. Uh, with no reference to race, but if we keep emphasizing uh, race, we, we create division, as you say, and, and uh, we have to stop doing that. Well, and it's really men, you know, uh, Peter, you know, and Rod, it's men that are under the most attack, uh, you know, a year or so ago, or well, really in the last 10 years, it's been the emasculation of men, like as if they can't be powerful, they can't be you know, strong leaders in their homes or anything because, ooh, they're domineering. And so now men, they don't know which way to turn, really. It's a crisis of identity for males. And what women actually need is that wonderful gift of a, a strong, wonderful man who has different perspectives, kind of, um, you know, might uh, approach a problem in a different way than a woman would. And this is the beautiful synergy that can be found in a marriage relationship even. Um, we need this and we need our men to be strong. And now society is just turning everybody into pansies because they're so afraid to be strong. Right. And it's, it's not good. It's not good for our children. It's not good for women. It's not good for anybody. <laughs> Yeah, that balancing factor, that's, a, that's God's design, right? To keep each other from excesses on both sides, right? Yes. Um, I don't know about some of our viewers, but possibly the, you know, the lockdowns and things like that have really brought that to the fore where, you know, there's um, some, some are trying to push to the extreme on one side and some to the extreme on the other side and, and good family connections, et cetera, can keep people from, um, from going over the edge in any direction, right? And uh, that's a real issue, right? Um, with uh, restrictions in place. So, yeah. given a given a question like that, would you would you in a in a debate setting would you object to the question or would you try to answer it? I never object to questions because I I love free speech. I think questions invoke a, a lot of conversation and a lot of thought. And what what we're finding now in society is that we're not allowed to ask the questions. So I would not, not want to be asked. I would love to give a very solid answer to it. And I would have answered and it, it would have been a completely different answer probably than any of the other of those panelists. I mean, you know, just like what I just said. 
So I like questions, Peter, and why yeah. not be asking questions? We're so afraid even to ask questions now in our society. How sad is that? We're afraid to ask questions of people. Yeah, but I would still encourage that questions should be fair, not like the one that was actually posed. <laughs> is it, it, it was a yeah, you're right, Peter, like the way they pose that question, and that would be the beauty of being able to answer it. Uh, totally unfair, ridiculous question, even the way they framed it, Peter, you're so right, like that's just, just pathetic. But then you get this opportunity to counteract it, you know, and frankly, I mean, if black lives matter, then why is the black on black crime? so incredible why are we seeing that they hurt their own businesses in their communities right this isn't really about that this is about the tear down of society it's about anarchy it's about soros paying an awful lot of people to be involved in protests like that it's about the destabilization of our entire world and a new world order uh you know uh, biblically prophesied many of these things and so we see the fulfillment of the, the Bible that, you know, that book that we love so much, we see the fulfillment of it. So we get to be, wow, like we're here at such a pivotal time to stand strong when nobody else is. Here we are, you know, holding up the, uh, uh, you know, a righteous stand for all of these questions. And so we get to answer them when posed to us, but they don't want to ask us. Right. Right. No, no. It has been uh, shown, like in some of those cities in, in the U.S. that are, you know, basically burning in the downtown cores and anarchy, <clears throat> lawlessness, looting, which is somehow justified uh, based on uh, seeking for racial uh, justice. <clears throat> but but it's been it's become so obvious. I mean, there's uh, black businesses have been burned to the ground. Black policemen have been shot. It really has nothing to do uh, with race, but with this Black Lives Matter movement, the organization itself is focused, and they have said as much, not only on, on the racial issues, but they want to destroy the traditional family. And, uh, you know, they've said that, that they, they want to promote, uh, you know, a, a, a society where there is no nuclear family with a mom and dad. And, and the, ironically, in a lot of the black communities that have been hurting so badly, uh, and with some legitimate, uh, very legitimate causes there, um, a lot of the problem is that the young people are growing up with no father in the home. And that's, uh, you know, again, a result of the, where our society is going in the destruction of the family. So it's, it's, a, it's a vicious cycle. And I'm glad, Laura Lynn, that you are uh, standing strong there in Abbotsford South, um, representing strong families and freedom and uh, justice. Absolutely. And uh, I know, you know, we have five great candidates. And one of the big questions we kept, we keep being asked is, who can I vote for in this riding? And we don't have candidates there. So my prayer and my hope is that by the next election, that we have a candidate in every single riding. And, you know, Rod, I know that uh, if we put you know, if we put our uh, hearts and minds together that we can work to have this really come about and if people will be encouraged, it's time to stand. And when the Christian Heritage Party is the only party representing, you know, values of conservatives, uh, it's our time. Yeah, you amen. will not find that. The BC Liberal and the NDP, and I think Tanya uh, Gaw, she put it this way in her latest post that she did this morning, uh, that they are all they are all wearing the same hat like the greens the NDP and the liberals they stand for the same things mm -hmm. and so we get a chance to speak uh, for the true conservatives of this nation those who know uh, what is right what is good for our children what brings about a healthy society and here we are we're doing it and so it's exciting and I'm getting a lot of support have you had anybody uh, like you're you're campaigning in, in a free style? You're not uh, allowing this government to put you under the boot with uh, COVID restrictions and so on. What what are you finding the reactions at the door? That people are they uh, frightened because of COVID, or are they uh, encouraged that there are people who are ignoring the hype and the fear? 
only one lady so far kind of stood back and she said, well, I, I didn't think anyone was doing this. And I said, well, you know, people are actually, and, and I'm not sick or anything. And I just have a brochure, you know, and I kind of held it up and I said, you know, there's some things you might want to know we stand for. And, uh, and, and so I, you know, I just passed it to her and it was great. And a lot of people at the door say, recognizing me and a lot of people saying, I already voted for you. Well, a few people wow. saying they already voted for me and that they will vote for us. Wow. I'm very encouraged. I, I think that this is exciting. The, the more left everybody goes, the more the liberals, you know, pound down on Lori Throness or, you know, Lori's a, a, he's, he's a great guy who stands for what's right in the BC Liberals, but he is one amongst, you know, a, a whole lot of people who won't say a word about the uh, sexualization of our children, won't say a word about euthanasia, won't say a word about, you know, uh, all of this um, ideology teaching that our schools are now, you know, they're, they're telling kids that, that BLM, a Marxist socialist <laughs> organization, is something to be paid attention to you know and we're we're speaking the truth people are listening yeah. well that is great to hear and i do want to encourage everyone listening and watching if you're in the lower mainland if you're anywhere um anywhere close to abbotsford even if you're not that close to abbotsford please go and uh, and help Laura Lynn and her campaign if you're able uh, donate to her campaign if you're able um, or or donate to the other candidates that we have as uh, as well these are uh, people who are really stepping out um saying something completely different from the other parties and uh, they need your support they need to feel it in different ways and so do all that you can in bc um chp bc is the only provincial wing that we have in chp at this time so we really got to focus in and uh pray for them wherever you are in the country and uh trust that god will uh give them a a big step forward as 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 we've heard here today the great encouragement so far so um do we uh rod do you have a thought in closing i'll um, just mention the other three candidates that are running with laura lynn and me um, there's ariel alder king in abbotsford mission d kranz a wonderful woman uh, have not even met yet but she's a great candidate in prince george mckenzie dan stewart is running in the chaco lakes right next to me and then i'm running in stakeen so we actually have uh, three candidates in the north uh, prince george uh Houston, moving west, and in uh, Smithers area. So, so we are uh, representing life, family, and freedom in the north. We thank uh, Laura Lynn and Ariel for standing uh, in Abbotsford area, Abbotsford South, and Abbotsford Mission. And you can find out more about our candidates at chpbc.ca and uh, check out the candidates and see if you want to get involved in helping in some way. And if not, if you don't have a candidate in your area, again, we encourage you to be uh, become a member and help us figure out who's going to be a candidate in your area next time. Lowland, do you have a last message that you want to uh, send before we close off here? Just uh, thank you so much. Um, any donations would be much appreciated. It is uh, sort of a, you know, take some, some good cold hard cash to purchase signs, to get your flyers out, to get mail outs out. Um, to do the things that are necessary to, to get into the papers, you know, to get an advertisement because people need to know that you're there and they sure know we're there. Uh, my signs are the biggest signs. I have to say, like, I found out what the biggest square footage of the sign could be. They're bigger than anybody else's sign. If I could just win on having big signs, I would win. And, uh, but, but the reason is, is we want to make an impact and I'm just so proud to be representing Canadian values and Canadian character. And it's time to fight. I was at a sort of a, a private group uh, setting last night, sharing the, the values. And I, I mean, 100% buy-in, like you got it. Like, what can we do? How can we help? Yeah. So what's up against us is John Horgan calling, you know, this crazy election like boom, when we weren't ready, because Rod, you told me, oh yeah, we got a year at least, you know, we'll just, 
basically get everything together and then right away we're in an election so it's been a real like fire hose of excitement yeah. but it's awesome if you would if you'd be able to any amount some of you can do a thousand dollars some of you can do ten or fifty dollars it matters all of it matters and uh you know uh you can go to our websites and and uh, donate, become part of it, even if you're from sort of a, a distance, you know, a distant place in BC and we're not in your riding. If you help support us, we win. We win. Thank you. Yeah. And if you live outside of BC, you're not allowed to donate uh, right. cash or money, rather, of any sort. But you can still help by praying for us, number one, and uh, you could make phone calls on behalf of some of the candidates. So, so if you're wondering, you're living outside of BC and you're wondering, how can I possibly help? Uh, consider contacting us and asking for a list of phone numbers and you can we'll give you a script you can call into one of these writings and uh, encourage people to consider the chp candidate running in that district so thanks for your help and uh, god bless you all thanks for watching our program today thank you thank you all again yes chp talks and uh, go to chp.ca for more information and god bless you see you next week Thanks, Peter.